I have been introduced, right? I'm Leo. Um, <laughs> Regina, my wife, uh, the smarter one, she's on the uh, steering committee for postures, and I'm not, so <laughs> there you go. Um, I will defer asking you all to introduce yourselves. Uh, we'll get through the presentation, and that should last about an hour, and then we will go upstairs, that's where we will have a very fancy feast and, and alcoholic beverages and all that kind of stuff. So um, we'll do an hour here and then maybe an hour upstairs, okay? And at that time, I may ask you to introduce yourselves. Um, what we are really, what we want to accomplish today is um, not just go through a bunch of slides, but we want to show you postages in such a way that you can go home tonight or maybe at work tomorrow and be able to redo some of the examples that we're showing you, to actually put postages to use instead of in the abstract. And so we're going to do that using uh, live demos. Right? And the presumption is that most of you, if not all of you, uh, have some Postgres background. Even if you don't, that's okay, you'll still enjoy the presentation. You can still go and mimic what, what we have done. Um, and uh, we will go through our demo, and then we will uh, take questions at the very end. Okay? So, um, first of all, this we do have a link that we want to show you. <coughs> it's in it's in Postgres too. This one. Yeah. That's PDF. Okay. This is the only link that you'll need. We're going to post the code examples that we use on this site. So yeah. uh, do take notes, but. Um, but you're not going to, the code uh, will be much easier to copy from the site <laughs> to make down. All right. Postgres.us. All right. So here we go. Okay. Postgres is a spatial extender to Postgres SQL. And by that, I mean um, most of you, if you work with databases, you know that most of the time you work with textual data, that being either characters or numbers. You have stored uh, currency, you store people's names, and so forth. Adding a spatial extender gives you more data types. In particular, it gives you uh, what are called geometry uh, data types. Now, let me show you the way that you can install Postgres on your installation of Postgres. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but um, the, uh, the links will be in the slide that we put up on where to download the various binaries. This is your typical Postgres, installa Postgres installation directory structure. For older versions of uh, Postgres, unless you're at the leading edge, you, and if you're on Windows, you can use the uh, Enterprise DB Stack Builder to just, uh, it's a one-click install on Postgres. But um, for this demonstration, we're using 9.3, which was released a few days ago. And then uh, we actually downloaded the installer for 2.11, which is the latest. And we pulled it off of the dev site, so this is the latest and greatest Postgres. And all you have to do once you download Postgres, you extract it, you get this directory structure which mimics the directory structure in Postgres. And this is for the Windows install. So 
all you have to do is copy all the files into their respective directories to install it this way. But if you want older versions, just go click on the installer that uh, Enterprise DB has wrapped up for you, and that will be much easier. Okay? So, now, This is the uh, PG admin tool which uh, you use to administer your Postgres installation. And once you have the files all copied, and let me just uh, create a new database to show you. Create a new database here. To add postgres, you just go down to new extension. These are all the extensions that's available to you. And once you've added those files in, you can choose postgres. And now you have postures. That's all there is to it. And now you have available to you all the features and functions in postures. So that's the installation. It's a simple, once you have the files, new extension, choose postures, and then you will have ready to go. For this demo, um, this is the database that we'll be using. We've also added um, Tiger and Tiger Data. Um, we added uh, a, a geocoder extension and a fuzzy string match for one of the examples that we're going to show you. Okay, and again, ex with the extension model, it's fairly easy. Just you pretty much have to click on create a new uh, extension, and you're there. All right. Um, this uh, fuzzy string match, is that related? Well, for the demo that we're going to, we're going to show you a geocoder. And for that, we're going to need the fuzzy string match. That's why I included it here. But uh, other than the geocoder part, the post just, you, you, you'll be fine without, uh, with just the post just installed. Okay. All right. So, Once you have a uh, post just going, what you would want to do is get some data to play with. Right? And for our demo, we got all of our data from the Massachusetts state, if I can remember the... Uh, yeah. And this is all free government data that we pay for with our tax dollars. Um, and they have a rapid transit. They also have um, anything that you can think of, digital elevations, uh, where the farm market, farmers markets are located, fire station markets are located, or stuff like that. Okay, so this is where we got the data for today's uh, presentation. Okay. Now, once you have the data, they come in, when you download the data from NASGIS, for example, these are the subway lines. They will come in this format. This is the ESRI format, also known as shapefiles. So when you pull down the zip file, extract it, it looks like this. And this is, has subway lines and subway stations. 
PostGIS has a nice utility that we can use to load shape files right here. It's a graphical tool that you can use to load shape files. And so to add the file that we downloaded, in this case the MBTA, rapid transit, I'm going to add both the station shape file and the subway line shape file. And I'll do open. The SRID is the spatial reference system. Um, before you do any comparison across disparate uh, data layers or map layers, you need to get the spatial reference system to be the same. For Massachusetts, um, it's 26986. All of the data that you'll find in this Massachusetts site uh, use the spatial reference system, which is called the uh, mass uh, plane, whatever, mass state plane, mass state plane and, uh, and meters. Okay, so all the data will be in meters. And then, um, I don't do, can I do it without um, deleting the error out? Okay, let me, let me uh, just to really <coughs> convince you that I'm doing this. I'm going to delete the two tables that it's already created. The arc, the node, and uh, I am going to import. Okay, great. That was easy. Um, the restaurant went back to the room. What happened? Oh, yeah. Do I need to? Yeah. What created all those tables? Oh, hmm? we imported them with. Oh, well, they came. They came with the import. Yeah. Well, the, yeah. These are all um, things that we did already, but I'm deleting them so we can proof this. Yeah. This is where I like them. All right, so this is two six two six nine six. Okay. This could be any random number, right? If no, 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 no. no. If you look, they don't really state it on, on the Massachusetts site, mm -hmm. um, but it's the EPSG code. No, I mean, for my, let's say I'm playing with the data. Yeah. I can put in any number. Yeah. Yeah, I have to specify that. Like uh, this would be, if I'm, I'm putting this data in a larger data set, maybe, yeah. then there would be some kind of cross-referencing between those. Yeah. But if I'm just playing on my desktop... If you're just playing, it wouldn't matter too much. Because right. the number becomes important when you mm -hmm. want to convert to a different um, spatial projection. Uh -huh. Or if you're um, using data um, just to keep track of the same, the data sets are in the same spatial reference and you want to give it the same ID. Um, yeah, in general, you want to get the right SRID. Yeah. Um, Should we talk uh, about the table? The, the table that has it listed in? Um, yeah, there is actually a system table that has um, all the spatial reference IDs here. So if you look at this table, you can see all the EPSG codes. And before you import data, you should make sure that it's one of these. Okay. I mean, if you import it with with zero, you know you'll be looking at um, analytics geometry that you learned in high school with the Cartesian coordinates starting at zero. That's fun too. You can <laughs> uh, you can draw triangles and prove the Pythagorean theorem things like that. Uh, so, but uh, yeah, if you want to have uh, some resemblance to the real world, you want to go ahead and, so I'm going to import this now. Okay, so this creates my two tables, arcs and nodes. What I like to do is I like to just open up the data just to make sure that uh, it, I'm not going to understand everything, um, but okay, I see green, I see red, those are subway lines, all right, good. And then um, here's the geometry. All right. So for subway lines, they are modeled as a line stream. Line stream. For stations, 
they are modeled as points. Let's see here. Okay. And let me just use this whiteboard very quickly to um, give you the three basic geometries. Uh, point. So when you enable PostGIS, these are the new data types that you add. Point, line string, okay, which is made up of two points and a line in between them, and then something called a polygon, which is your area. Okay, that's a polygon. Uh, two points form a line string, Line streams together form a polygon. Okay, there are other types, but these are the basics, and they will go far. They, you could get three dimensional and all that stuff, but later on. I should mention, for jumping ahead, that there is another type that we're going to cover today called rasters. So these are called the vector types. Vector in the sense that all these geometric objects here can be represented using an equation. Uh, so we think. Um, rasters, these are the things that